Good evening. Welcome to The Point of View. We're live on CCTV this and every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. The Point of View is a live and interactive current affairs show where we bring you the right guests, we ask them relevant questions, and we come up with some real insights. And it's live on Facebook at CTTVGH, and we're also on Twitter with the hashtag Point of View. My name is Bernard Avle. And tonight we're focusing on roads. It's a part two of our special program on roads. A few weeks ago, we focused on the state of Ghana's roads. Tonight, we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at the state of the roads in terms of whether they are paved or unpaved, tarred or untarred. We're also going to look at road infrastructure in terms of traffic lights, in terms of street lights, in terms of bridges. This past few weeks have been quite heady. People of Adenta have protested. People of Teshi have also demonstrated to show their dissatisfaction with the state of roads. When we come back, I'll be speaking to some two interesting people about the state of our roads. Don't go away. So today I'll take you to a, a, a few places, most starting with T. I'll start in Teshi and we'll discuss the Agbeliza Road. Then I'll take you to Tema. The 19 kilometer Accra Tema motorway. I'm going to show you the state of the road. Then we'll go to Takrade, where there are very interesting complaints about lack of road infrastructure. We'll then go to Adenta and ho hopefully end up in Tamale. So it's four T's and one A. And I have two very interesting people. My first guest is um, a lecturer at the Department of Planning of the KNUST, who's also a transportation engineering expert, helped design roads in many parts of the world, including parts of the Middle East, the, uh, the Gulf areas, who have a lot of money. And he also worked in the United Kingdom. His name is Dr. Kaminta Baizi. Doc, great to have you. Good evening. Good evening to you. Good evening to our Did I describe you properly? Did I give you your full credentials? It's enough. <laughs> Lecturer and also transportation engineering expert. You are, you are a powerful guy. I also have um, engineer Maham Abdullah, who is a civil engineer by training and a road and building consultant. Engineer, great to have you. Thank you. So a lot of my, my viewers say that we should try and bring experts. Sometimes, last week I had two politicians, so this week I have two experts to help us delve into the roads. What I'm going to do is two things. I'm going to first discuss the state of the roads itself. Some very interesting facts to share for those of you who don't know. So our road network is divided into two. We have the urban roads and the feeder roads. The feeder roads and the rural areas. Now, it will interest you to note that uh, only 5% of our feeder roads have bitumen on them. 65% of our feeder roads have gravel surface. And 30% are what you call earth surface roads, which means they are completely untouched. They are the way God made them, 35%. Right now, 37% of these urban roads, are, uh, these feeder roads, are described as good condition, 38% in fair condition, and 25% poor condition. But when we come to urban roads, very interesting statistics in terms of paved or unpaved. 66% of our urban roads are unpaved. Only 34% are paved. My engineers will explain. But let's start with a troublesome road. It's been this way for over 10 years. It connects Teshi to the Spintex Road. As at 7 a.m. this morning, the MP for Teshi said he was at the Minister of Roads office waiting to talk to him about this road. We have a quick report on that road for you. The 7.5 kilometer road connects Teshi Laskala, Agulizan, Manet Estate through to Spintex. The road project was awarded to Merlin Investment at a contract sum of 62 million Ghana cities. But the project stalled after the 2016 elections. In June this year, the Roads and Highway Minister Kweisi Amuakwata revealed that government has paid 60 million Ghana cities out of the outstanding 35 million Ghana cities to the contractor. He added that the contractor was expected to resume work within six days. It's been five months since the roads minister made those commitments, but the road remains the same, with no work done. Outraged by this, residents of Teshi Agbliza have given a three-week ultimatum to government to fix the road or face their wrath. Prosper Tindani spoke to the media. 
Some residents of Teshi Agbleza also expressed their frustration to City News. <laughs> About an hour after the press conference, I had information that about three excavators have been deployed to the area. I took a drive on the bumpy road. I spotted the excavator leveling the road at about 7 p.m. Reporting for City News, I am Anna Seydu. A bit of people power there. Uh, they've given government a theory ultimatum to fix the road. And I saw excavators working at 7 p.m. We don't know if the contractor is on site or whether this excavator was there just for some gymnastics. But we're seeing very interesting developments. Don't forget, Domi did a protest. Adenta has a protest now. Teshi as well. Before we talk about this particular road, if you're viewing us, send us a comment on the number on the screen. How bad or how good is your road compared to what we just showed? Now, let me take you to Tema. There's a 19 kilometer Accra Tema motorway which has had problems we all know. It's a pothole riddled road. We're going to show you parts of the road and speak to people who use that road as well. The Accra Tema motorway is fast deteriorating, becoming a death trap with high traffic growth and encroachment of right of way. The motorway was opened to traffic in November 1965 to link the harbour city of Tema to Accra. The road has seen some minor facelifts, including the covering of potholes with asphalt. But heavy vehicular movement on the road continue to wear it out. Most motorists who ply the route have criticized the use of asphalt in patching the potholes. According to them, cracks are evident at points where the asphalt and the concrete are joined. A recipe for an accident. Every one week or two, you will have a serious accident on this road, especially when it rains. You can imagine when you are speeding up on the motorway and you get to a point, then all of a sudden, a big trench there, you may try to avoid the trench, and then you go into the other lane, endangering the other one who is in the inner lane or the other lane. By all means, there will be a cross. Quite like about a week ago, our friend ran into a car. Now he's still at the hospital. If you are coming from Tema, especially from uh, there's a place they call 18 Junction, around that place is very bad. As I'm talking to you now, this morning you are talking to me. Go and see a huge traffic over there just because of a simple portals with uh, some metal coming out from it. And it's really affecting us and it's swelling our car tires a lot. So, I think they have to do something about it. The motorway is too, is, is too bad. It's very bad. There is more portals on the motorway. Anytime I go here, I'm coming. I, 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 can, I can see a car changing tide. So it's, it's very bad. It's very bad. Road and building consultant, engineer Mahama Abdullah says, the Ghana Highway Authority must conduct routine monitoring works on the stretch. According to him, a number of accidents on the motorway can be prevented if defects on the road are identified and addressed nice concrete work and you see some black black portions so it's like you're not using the same material to do the party so you'll be driving on the road and you see a pocket of uh potholes which have been patched with a different material aesthetically it's been offensive 
-hmm. Secondly, the two materials or the two pavement layers have different uh, resilient modulus. The concrete is extremely high, which is a rigid pavement. It's not a pavement that is that reflects. They rather have cracks or they break. But asphalt would reflect with application of load. It is, it is constant monitoring. You know, the whole country are segmented by the Ghana Highways Authority. They have their area managers. In fact, in this case, the area managers do not actually run one, one district or municipality. Some of them go beyond one district. And one of their duty is to be able to report whatever uh, def defects on that their, their power or like where they, co they control to the, the appropriate quarters so that swift actions are taken to avert any calamity. Now, in this case, I suppose that the Tema Enclave will be under an, an area manager. Aside the Ghana Regional Office of Ghana Highway Authority, the area manager means that has to has to do a lot of monitoring on the motorway because now, like I said, the, we'll do the, the patches like you have also observed. With this on short, short time, the, the, the asphalt will just go off again. So it means that even though it is too repetitive to be doing the, the maintenance, but it is better to do it and to save lives. The 19 kilometer motorway is the oldest paved road in Ghana. Being a concrete pavement, it is more expensive to construct than asphalt or other bituminous surface roads. But it is more economical to operate over the long term. It is long lasting, stronger, and requires minimal maintenance. A number of these potholes on the Accra Tema motorway endangers the lives of motorists who ply the stretch on a daily basis. For City News, Philip Me Latte. So that was two weeks ago when we did part one of this program. There's an interesting story in today's daily graphic. It's on page 20, a story written by Nana Kunedo. I'm going to read portions of the story. It says, major rehabilitation works on the 18-kilometer terminal motorway are scheduled to commence in the first quarter of 2019. The project includes a five-lane dual carriageway with six interchanges, including three new ones at Community 18, Teshi Link, Jowlu, and the remodeling of others. While awaiting major rehabilitation works to begin, work on the patching of portals on the 18 kilometers motorway is to commence this week. Today is Monday, this week. The minor work, estimated at 2.4 million cities, involves the patching of potholes with asphalt. What Engineer Mama was saying is not the right thing to do. In the inner carriage of the highway, patching of potholes with asphalt. Don't forget, motor is made of concrete. The patching of potholes in the inner carriage work will also commence on the patching. Sorry, the, after the patching of potholes in the inner carriage, work will also commence on the patching of potholes on the shoulders of the motorway dual carriage. The patching of potholes will be executed by Sesacom Limited, a local construction firm. So we went back to the motorway today, and I'm going to show you some pictures to tell you that with, between the past two weeks we went there and today, whether anything has changed at all. So this is the motorway today. This is what you're seeing. And later on, you hear from some of the residents of the motorway. Now, a source at the Ministry of Roads and Highways told the Daily Graphic in Accra yesterday that resources had already been mobilized for work to begin this week on this thing you're seeing. Whether, whether it's a um, metal frame in a road, some are black stuff, some are all, all kinds of things in the road, some are laterite. Now, as part of measures to ensure smooth traffic management, the source said work on the project will start at 10 a.m. each day after the morning rush hour. We also will place traffic guards on each road, on the road's advantage points to help with the management. This is today. So what you're seeing is today. So most of the vehicles try to stay off. I burst a back tire uh, on this motorway a few, a few weeks ago. Good. My name is Bruce Michael. I come from Jumakuba. But I've used the motorway almost seven years with that. By our motorway, every day we the pay tax, we the pay of uh, road rate, everything. By the motorway is not good for us. Around 18 junction to yeah, about 12 to 18 junction. No good at all. Anytime, road 
I will see accident for that. Please, 18 dash and motorway is not good. So unless government, I will beg government to come and do the motorway good for us. Tools, everything, uh, we hold, may hold, and the road is not good at all, give us. So everything, our shock and our, if our master's bar shock has ever give us, at least one week, two weeks, is for. So anything, maintenance and everything, uh, they cost us. So I beg government to come and help us too. Every several time, I have a to after that, after that. The bottles are the bottle. See, they are paying to, they are not seeing it. Those people like that. I'm trying to do it. There's a big bottle to that. Every person pays as if there's a big bottle to So we are not going to do it. 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 So that was Elvis Washington. What's going on on the motorway? <laughs> the the portals look very serious. Yeah. Very ugly. I think when you are even driving, you don't see like what I just saw. Yeah, it's set. Yeah, it's very dangerous. And uh, uh, I think the earlier they start the major work, the better. What I see is that um, they're just trying to have a knee-jerk approach towards um, the this, this situation. Anytime we hear the uh, motorists make a cry foul, the appropriate agency just rushing to do some that they take an ad hoc measure to just solve the problem uh, no matter the design that they will use in maintaining as in the asphalt uh, design ideally we have another asphalt uh, mix that will be slightly better than the normal ones we use mm -hmm. it will go closer to the strength of the concrete but mm -hmm. for in terms of resilience it can never be closer to the, the strength that we expect from the reduced concrete mm -hmm. no matter what you do the asphalt is still a flexible pavement and a flexible pavement coming on the rigid pavement will always deflect. So whatever is going to be on the the rigid pavement will just reflect the same way. So this 2.4 million we are going to spend to do uh, rehabilitation yeah. is not a permanent solution. No, no, it's not. It's just so. Maybe how long will it last if they put asphalt in the concrete? How long will it last? No, it, it depends. It depends on the work method, the contractor, or the skills involved. Uh, definitely, when the axle loads become increasingly high from the ports. You know, mostly when you look at most of the traffic we have, the ones, mostly you see that on the, the one that goes to the harbor, it is fairly better than the one which is sleeping there. So the Accra bound side is worse? Yeah. Because yeah, because heavier vehicles are coming from yeah, the Yeah, because port. you expect food stuff from the hinterland, mostly on the right, the, the one which is Accra bound or the okay. south bound, mm -hmm. and the machinery from the harbor is going towards the mm. north bound. Mm. So that's why if you do most of the road condition survey, you see that the wheels of the right hand side, the right, the, the right carriageway, it's always having a lot of defects than the, mm. the the left one. So it's just a, a just a measure, temporary measure, just to maybe it's better than to say we're going to wait to get the money. I'm sure they want to get like some time back. I realized they were trying to get some money and then fix the whole. Yeah, I told us the, the motorway rehabilitation project, which is the expansion, will cost us 500 million CDs, I think, if yeah. not dollars, and yeah. it's going to involve a PPP. three lane, three lane in both uh, carriageways. So they're, mm. they're going to increase the lanes in, into three. I, I feel we need to actually um, ensure that the inflows or the junctions. Mm. I, I don't see the problem with the two lane as of now. Mm. We can still use the two lane for the next 10, 15 years. You think so? I'm telling you. Because they say they want to do three lane. six. Yeah, three lane. Three, a a three five lane <coughs> dual carriageway with six interchanges. You right. don't think that a five lane dual carriageway? I don't know what that means. No, what, 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 what I, um, I know from the sources is that we are doing, we are adding one more lane. So that's three here, three, three there. Yeah. You see, where the traffic will always build up is there, where we have the, the tow boats. Mm. So we can always compensate if we, have, we don't have land. Mm. So maybe about 500 meters before we get to the approach, okay. we we'll widen the, 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 the carriageway so we can have about six lanes, eight lanes. So that when we get there, we don't spend so much time in paying the tool and then moving out mm. of that. That's the bottleneck. Otherwise, from the motor, uh, from the um, tow boot area, when you're moving, you see any other traffic until you get to about some five kilometers before you get to the Tamar runabout from the Ashaman mm. uh, flyover. Yeah, so we don't really have that problem. But like we said, in the in the minds of the, the former president, the first president, mm -hmm. when the, the road was constructed, we had a tool and we cried foul, but it has been so useful for over mm. 50 years. So that's why I also think that I will side with them in the lane that they want to play. Otherwise, it's mostly at the bottlenecks where we have the tow boots. 
and the, the, the runabout. That's why we have to actually consider so, the uh, widening. Ka Dr. Kaminta, you are a transport uh, sort of planning engineer. Has, has the motorway outlived this usefulness? Well, thank you very much. Uh, currently, we cannot call it a motorway. It's not. What is it? It's just like any urban road. You travel along the, the motorway very frequently and you see a lot of side activities, mm. junctions, people cutting in, people stopping there. And so it is no longer a motorway as it used to be. Now, one of the things What's that... What's a motorway? A motorway or a highway as... Motorway is a UK terminology. Okay. A highway is a US terminology. Okay. And basically, what we call them here is, uh, is a national, we call them the N1, N1 national the the highways. Uh -huh. In other words, when you have a motorway or a highway, it is dedicated. Mm. There are no roads crossing it. Mm -hmm. There are no side activities. Okay. And it is just when you go on it, you are just driving through without any interference, any side friction whatsoever. Whether it is going through the towns and cities or it is going through uh, um, set, uh, areas, i.e. Um, going through the forest areas, it should have no interference with side activities. That's what a motorway or a, a, a highway is. As it is now, it's no longer a motorway. It's just by name only. So is the problem the fact that there are crosses and intersections or is the problem because of the human settlement? Well, um, let's take the road from Achimota to Ofanko. Mm. It is now what we call a highway. Because the moment you step in there, you don't have any interactions until you get to Ofanko. Mm. And there are settlements. But we have side routes that you can use to go into the settlement. So you can have a highway going to a settlement with the right sort of sideways and other things and it was so it's not the a highway. settlement it's, it's not the, a settlement. It's the fact that it, there are things that interfere with your movement precisely now um engineer mama mentioned the fact that uh, to him the two lanes is adequate but he thinks we can still do the three lanes from a professional point of view this is not even subject to opinion it's subject to a study you do a proper transportation study, and the study will inform you, do you need two lanes? Do you need three lanes? Maybe you even need four lanes. What do you study? What you do, we have what we call a transportation study. So mm -hmm. you take a corridor, you take an area, mm -hmm. and then you look at all the activities that go around, all the developments, then you, you are able to project the amount of traffic that is currently on that road, the amount of traffic that you are going to get in five years, yeah. in 10 years, in mm. 20 years, and in 30 years, mm -hmm. you go as far as 30 years. And then you say, for this amount of traffic that is going to come on, mm -hmm. we are designing, and in transportation planning, we design for 30 years minimum. So in 30 years, what will be the amount of traffic on that road? So you design the, the, the road capacity mm -hmm. to meet those demands. So you look at the sort of developments that are coming there now and the anticipated developments in the future. And you're able to predict mm. how much traffic is going to come on. And then you determine okay. the, the number you, you of You are ways. one of Ghana's foremost transport engine, engineering experts. I'm sure you're familiar with Ghana's transport master plan for Greater Accra Region. Does it include any study on the motorway which could inform this five or six lane dual carriageway? Um, the, the study itself included the motorway, yes. Okay. But I have looked at the study itself in detail. Mm -hmm. And sorry to say, it is not worth the paper is written on. You mean Ghana's transport master plan for Greater Accra Region is not worth the paper is printed on? I can say that authoritatively. And I have wow. written a letter to the Minister of Transport to that effect, wow. detailing why the, the report that study was done was not fit for purpose. 
Is this the same plan that this current minister is using? Because you wrote to the former minister. Um, I don't know that the current minister is using it, but what I do know is that no study has been done subsequently. That is the only Well, the government is, is telling us that they are going to do an uh, expansion of the motorway. It's going to cost us, I've confirmed now, $500 million. There's all kinds of designs which we showed last two weeks. If you are going to spend half a billion dollars on a road, which is part of a plan which you say is not where the piece of paper is on, then you're probably saying this is a false start. Definitely. And I can give you an example. In 2007, wow. uh, there is a road in Kuwait called the Fort Ring Road, which is the busiest road in Kuwait. Mm. They had a consultant that came up with a study and gave um, plans on how to expand it. They went as far as awarding the contract. Mm. But before the construction could start, the document came before me and what I realized they had done is the study had shown that once you expand the road and you do certain things, you'll be able to get a lot of traffic flowing freely on the Fort Ring Road. But what happens is that the congestion is pushed to the side roads. In other words, they didn't consider the entire the, the system. Up, yeah. They were looking narrowly at just the, the road without considering the entire system. There was once you called me about the opening of the tunnel at East Legon. And I said to you that if you don't look at it as a system approach, wow. what we do now, uh, which Engineer Mahama alluded to, is what I call the cosmetic approach to planning. Wow. And so we do knee-jerk activities. We fix this only to realize that the problem has been shifted somewhere else. You go and fix it, then it shifted somewhere else, and the solution is to look at a systems approach, find out but, what but you can do. People. people are complaining, people are impatient, people's cars are getting damaged. So you're talking all these nice, nice things, but if you tell people, I'm going to give you one extra lane on the motorway, and I'm going to expand it, I'm sure people will be happy. And you don't need to go to school to know that you need one more lane, or am I being too naive? You need, you need um, to go. I need to, we need to study. That, that's why he said, you know, we have a, what we call the traffic, uh, traffic impact assessment. We have to do a traffic count, like he said. So as of this time, let's say in even November, the the traffic pattern changes. So there are factors that you use. Maybe in this November they counted about maybe uh, the annual average daily traffic on the motorway was mm. maybe X number. Mm. So they will do projection. They look at even economic. Mm. Yeah, all those comes and then they have the projection. Maybe in the next five years, what's the growth of the Wow. The vehicles we are having, the, even the DVLA has an information. The number of vehicles which are coming to the country, those which are being registered, and then the economic viability of the next uh, location. So if the motorway is going to a place which is not uh, in your projections, it's the next 10, 5, 15 years, you're not going to develop that much. All those things will come into the, the design. If you look at the uh, Ofanko to uh, Saum Road, I think in 2003, when the government had a concession loan from China, there was a study like that. So even my, I think when I was doing my master's, that was the projections I used. And then the control was just to use the tow boat as a check. Mm. So all those things come into play. You just don't say, okay, because I think I have the money in the next five years, I want to add another lane. So when, when they say we are using 2.4 million cities to patch potholes on the motorway, does that sound right in terms of cost? They would have costed it. At least they know the area which is actually badly damaged now. They would have gone to do sectional and um, well, localized measurement. They have their area managers or the mobile maintenance unit would have gone to the road, the whole 18 uh, kilometer stretch, and they would have taken all the. Um, but why spend 2.4 million on a road that you are planning from next year to convert into a six to hour carriage? You get my point? We are in 2018 November. Yeah. You want to patch potholes on an 18 kilometer road. You say in 2019 first quarter you are going to start a six lane dual carriage. Isn't 2.4 million on just patching portals a bit of a, a, a lot of money? Can't you use that money to do the tertiary road? No, that could that you know about the lives. That could you see the construction itself the 18 kilometer can take more than three years. And if you're doing the construction, the, the contractor is uh, mandated to be doing maintenance periodic maintenance of the existing road. But if you look at what is happening on the road now and looking at the, the level of carnages, 
It is much better that you actually get the road. Isn't it better to get street life with that amount? I don't know if you've done any courses. Aren't our roads? I'm just thinking, I'm spending 2.5 million to patch potholes on a road that doesn't have street lights. On a road that next year you want to expand into a three lane both sides. Does, is that, does that make sense? Well, um, I don't disagree with the fact that they need to be done. Um, I don't know about the amount, but patching we must do. With part, with, 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 with the asphalt? Even if we are going to reconstruct, because like uh, Engineer Mama said, for the period of the construction, construction, it will still be used, and you have to make sure that it's safe. And I will agree with what you just said, that we should also look at the streetlights. Because, in my view, in fact, we have far fewer accidents in this country. Given the sort of infrastructure, the sort of facilities we have, it's a miracle that we don't have many more accidents. Mm -hmm. But given what we have, the statistics... It's a miracle we don't have more accidents. Exactly. Why? Because the infrastructure is just so bad. You can't see well in the, driving in the night. I couldn't drive here myself tonight because I said the roads are too dark. Yeah. Uh, when it is six o'clock, I don't use the motorway because it's way too dark. And the, wow. the roads are not good, right? And so I think that Ghanaians are doing much, much better in terms of trying to keep themselves individually safe when the state is not providing what is required to, to wow. make our roads safe. And so the, the statistics is that road accidents in this country is the number one killer. It kills more people than any other disease. And the cause is, is it the road design or indiscipline of the drivers? What was the cause? Um, before we came here, Engineer Mama and I were talking about it. I said that the, the engineers, the civil engineers, are one of the, pro uh, the they, are, they are part are of the us. problem. They, they don't give us proper standard designs. Oh, mm -hmm. So the designs are substandard and we don't train our drivers very well. So you combine poor, poorly designed roads with poorly trained drivers. With poorly trained That's drivers. It's a toxic mix of catastrophe. And so I'm saying that it's a miracle we don't have more accidents in, in this we'll, country. We'll take a short break on that grim note that it's a miracle we don't have more accidents. When we come back, I'll ask Engineer Mama what he knows about the Teshi Road. Then we'll also discuss road design because don't forget adenta and other parts of the country have been complaining about footbridges about street lights what can we do about those this is the point of view don't go away <music> Receiving money from abroad with MoneyGram is now as easy as our bank alert. Now you can receive money from your loved ones abroad in minutes, anytime, 24-7, directly into your bank account. Let's show you how. Tell your loved ones to send you money online or from a MoneyGram location and give them your bank account details. Your money is then transferred in minutes and you can receive your money straight into your account. Your money is available to you anytime, rain or shine, in just minutes. Available in select banks in Ghana. For more information, visit www.moneygram.com.gh. MoneyGram, bringing you closer. City TV is live. City TV is a free to air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access CTTV on your television. CTTV can be accessed on a multi-TV digibox. Tune into CTTV and experience your world. CTTV, it's your world. Welcome back. This is the point of view. Tonight we're do, doing a part two of our mini part series on roads. In fact, we started with a program I did myself with Fento Tahiru showing you roads from about six regions. Today I have two experts. One is uh, an internationally acclaimed um, 
transport engineering expert and lecturer in planning at KNUSC. The other is a civil engineer who's a, a road contractor. And later on, we'll bring the government officials and others. So it's going to be a long series. Here are some of your comments on the road situation in Ghana. Hello, Bernard. Good evening. Please, the portals on the motorway are unacceptable considering the money collected daily. No street lights to a hey, Ghana. This is Collins from Taifa. Good evening, City. The so-called engineers are part of the problem when it comes to road construction in this country. Oh, he's calling you so-called. <laughs> Hi, Bernard. I don't live anywhere close to Manette or Teshi, but that road needs to be fixed ASAP. Because of the nature of that road, I always refuse to drop off my classmates there after lectures. This is Philip Massey in Ashaiman. It's time the people of Alajo also came out and demonstrated from Jowolu Junction through to Polo Park. The portals are like Galamse pits. This is Yakubu. <laughs> Bernard, the only language this government listens to is demonstration. The road linking Bimbila and Salaga is in a bad state. And this is the same road that links Bimbila and the village of our MP. And it seems he's not seeing it. We need the authorities to act now. This is Saidu or Saibu from Bimbila. Dr. Adai, watching us in Kumasi, Ghanaians are suffering from bad roads all because of our venal leaders, both MPP and NDC. We now know demonstration is the only way. We Kumasi people are just observing and marking time. Ghana can do better. Good evening. Bernard, we need ramps under the Temastil Works Junction traffic light removed. I mean the TT Brothers area. The ramps are causing unnecessary traffic heading towards the Temamoto runabout, Philip in Ashima. So it's as if those who drive want more speed, and those who don't drive, they need less speed. Let's take you to Adenta and show you. This road has been talked about, a quick report on the state of that road and a demonstration that ensued, and we'll also show you a similar situation in Takradi. We'll discuss road infrastructure in addition to just the state of the road. Uh, we, uh, pardon us about the sound. So that's uh, some shots from Adenta today. And I'm sure we know the story already. We are told 195 people have died on the Adenta Road. There are six foot bridges not completed. There are six foot bridges not completed. You know the story. Yeah. Um, is it just a question of money or poor design? No, that one is, is money. It's money. Uh, that contract was awarded to China Water. Okay. Petro Corporation. Mm. Somewhere in September 2008. Okay. They actually moved to site 29 July 2009. All right. It was uh, um, a 41 million USD contract, jointly funded by the Saudi fund or the Arab fund, the Badia and then GOG. Where did the road start from? It's supposed to start from uh, atomic <coughs> junction, where we had the gas explosion, mm -hmm. to Pantan Junction. It's a 5.6 kilometer, approximately 3.5 uh, miles. The foot bridges was a, a provisional sum of six foot bridges, uh, which are part of the road furniture. 41 million dollars. 41 million from Atomic US Junction to Pantan Junction. That's right. The 5.6 kilometer stretch of. And it included six foot bridges. Yes. The, in the provisional sum, that was what was stated in, as part of the contract, mm -hmm. and the contract was supposed to end in 18 months. So starting from 2009 July to the first quarter of 2011. Wow. So by March 20, yeah, the first quarter, maximum by we should have finished, we should have finished and handed over 41 million dollars. 41 million US who provided the money? Saudi fund or the, uh, the Arab fund? The Arab fund, the Badia, the Badia fund, a loan or a grant? No, they are loan, and then the uh, GOG. There are three components, there are three joint companies who are supposed to sponsor. GOG had the price, I don't know the exact figure for the GOG, but it was a minute portion of the, the 41 okay. million USD. The delay in the initial delay was as a result of the fact that we needed to do compensation because we are widening the road carriageway. So those who 
Yeah. We need to do compensation of affected claimants of their buildings. Mm -hmm. We need to relocate the mm -hmm. service mains, mm -hmm. i.e. Uh, Ghana Water, Electric Pools, uh, Telecoms underneath. Mm -hmm. And that component was supposed to come from GOG. Okay. But well, you know now, most of the time, when the donor funded are coming to the country now, they expect that you would have done almost all the underground work. When they bring their money, they are time bound. Mm. So as of 2013, mm -hmm. when we have even gone the, I've gone the project time, the, con the consultant actually had to write their final report indicating that the contractor has not, been, uh, has not realized his uh, uh, IPCs from government. Because by that time, the salary fund had exhausted, their, they have honored their part of the bargain. And so in 2015, the contractor had to force or involve the clauses in the contract to have to take for the government to take over the project. So as of now, I'm told today that there are six contractors who are going to do the food bridges. So people were asking whether there were contractual obligations. The contractor is out of the contract. So the Saudis gave us their portion of the money. That's right. But GOG didn't. So so they brought the money in the pool. Let me say like okay, ours was to do the main carriageway. Yours was to tackle the other service lane or because they knew that the compensation would 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 prolong. You know, getting people out of so that was what government was supposed to take care of. Yes. One of them and they were supposed to finish in March 2011. March 2011. Before March, but I just visited uh, the first quarter because 18 months project from July 2009. Now, do you know if the footbridges were part of the original money that Saudis paid? No, 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 no. I'm saying that there was a provisional stamp in the contract. When they say we are not, they don't have specifics, but they said this provisional stamp is supposed to, con uh, to uh, cover six footbridges as part of the project. How much were the food bridges to be co cost? No, no, no. You, you will not just say that. That's what they said. They, they put, they put as a, as but, but the, the way you what I know the now, project what was I know were now. the food bridges to have been finished by the time the road was done? Of course. Because you do, as you are doing the main carriageway, you have to be doing your, especially with the, with the, Caving, the earth caving in. So you cannot do the carriageway before you come and excavate that pier. If you're going to hit a rock, you would have to blast. And so before you do the blasting, by that you should have... So they built the structure for the footbridge, but they didn't do the connection. Yes, you have to finish that one first. So why didn't they do it? Is it money? Yes, I'm saying that in 2013, the City TV is live. City TV is a free-to-air digital channel. On a digital TV, Please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access CTTV on your television. CTTV can be accessed on a multi-TV digibox. Tune into CTTV and experience your world. CTTV, it's your world. Hello and good evening. You're welcome once again to another exciting edition of Sister Sister. My name is Jessica. Every Thursday night on City TV, you're welcome to join women from different backgrounds and opinions as they weigh in on your relationship issues. Watch Sister Sister as the ladies get real with issues about love, marriage, betrayal, sex, dating, trust, finances, and more. Look, I th look I'm telling you, sometimes you see, you let your guard down. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Now, look, most of the time, my main problem is that when you unpack, don't go to the first gear. Once you hit the first gear, you are likely to go to second, third, fourth, fifth. You understand so just don't attempt it so once you attempt it maybe the first day because you're careful and da 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 and sometimes we mistaken in um, when you meet an intellectual lady you know a very well spoken mm. lady a very sharp beautiful mm, lady you think that they are pure they, they can't yeah. possibly have any impurities or anything like that join jessica and her sisters for city tv's all women talk show sister sister every thursday at 9 p.m Sister Sister is sponsored by Frytol. <laughs> we spice up your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy-oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. Those security guys who were supposed to protect them, I'm sure by now some of them have all of them arrested. Hmm. They must all be arrested because it's an unprovoked attack. 
Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Join us for Breakfast Daily, only on City TV. Catch the premiere of Brazil Avenue on Wednesday, 5th December 2018 at 10pm, only on City TV. Oi, 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 vem pra quebrar, com tudo vamos tentar, com tudo, oi, 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 oi. Get the backstory of the major news stories on press conference. Hear from the editors and the reporters behind the biggest stories of the week. The first thing needs to think and reconsider there are girls who, women who are in, the, in our universities who have been sexually molested for grades. That doesn't matter. Press conference every Sunday at 9 p.m. with Duke Mensa Opoku only on City TV. Cosmopolitan, new experiences, social media, blazing conversations, fashion, life hacks, all of this and more. This is our scape. This is your scape. Join Apioko Ashon Abe and Emma Fachikata on Cityscape right here on City TV every Saturday at 4 p.m. <laughs> of the most exciting football league in the world. Don't miss the stats, the news, and the debate. Get expert opinions on who makes the Fantasy League Premier League team of the week. It's the Premier League Preview Show. You cannot in a lifetime uh -huh. compare the players in Pep's team last season mm -hmm. to that of what Mourinho had in his first season. Jose Mourinho's squad of 2004-2005 were miles, miles ahead of Pep Guardiola's team. So. The Premier League Preview Show, every Friday at 3 p.m., only on City TV. It's inspiration. It's the word. The teachings. The test of life is what you do with power and is what you do with blessing. The test of life is what you do with favor. The test of life is what you do with promotion. Whether it's political, economic, financial, or spiritual, the test of life is what you do with the blessing and with power and with resources. Tune in to Voice of Inspiration with Archbishop Duncan Williams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. on City TV. Quero ver todo mundo balançando! Ninguém pode ficar parado! É só loucura! Catch the premiere of Brazil Avenue on Wednesday, 5th December 2018 at 10pm, only on City TV. Welcome back. This is still the point of view, and we're live on City TV. My guest engineer, Muhammad Abdullahi, he is a road building contractor or consultant. consultant. And I also have um, Dr. Kaminta Beji, who is a, 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 a transport consultant. And we're trying to understand the situation with our roads and the road infrastructure. So, the first part discussed the motorway. We didn't really talk about the tertiary road, but we're more looking at the Adenta Road. And I'm going to show you a short report. On the state of that road but some very interesting things i'm hearing that the adenta road started from atomic junction 2009 july uh, was to have ended by first quarter 2011 
three-part funding. And as of 2018, the road is still not finished. I was going to ask if the road had road markings also done. Yes. So the road markings were done? Yes. Because there are hardly any. Yes, they were. They were done. Why? When so, road markings are done, do they have to be done again every year? Because no, I can't a, see any road markings on no, that road. Not every year. When they are about to start the road markings, um, they have to do trial sessions. Okay. And then they have some machines at the gadget at the Ghana Highway, the yeah, Roads and Safety Division, that they have to come and assess and see the level of reflectivity. Mm -hmm. So they have some margins or some range that if it falls within the range, that you know, they are paint and glass bits. That brings about the reflection. So the quantity of glass bits that they put in the paint and the type of paint they are using mm -hmm. plays a major role as to whether they are going to stay for longer or short time. Mm -hmm. They might just uh, re react with the with um, nature, as in the, the weather, and then the wheels of the vehicles. Actually, if the vehicles are moving from, they are just moving from one lane to the other, often. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they take it over. It's better, sometimes if, if it doesn't kill before they allow, they open the, the, the route to traffic. So I think when they are doing the traffic markings, uh, strict adherence have to be ensured, as in getting one carriageway finished before getting the current time well maximized before they move to the other end. Mm. Some of the paints are just not good. The paints are just not good. And it comes back to uh, the records of the subcontractors who mostly undertake such projects. If you see the Peduasi Road, that, that paint was done, or the uh, mark was done in 2006. It's still as new as it is. So if this one was completely maybe 2014, and, and the then, markings are gone. The markings are gone. We have to look at it. All right. Let me show you a short report on the state of that road. I'm going to ask Engineer Kaminta what a good road must have and how does the Adenta road compare to that standard. So that's a quick one. This dual carriage highway connects Medina and Adenta in the northeast part of the Greater Accra to the eastern region and the western part of the country through the Tetequashi interchange. For about 10 years since its construction, the foot's bridges have been left uncompleted. Unlike many other highways, crossing the road as a pedestrian on this Madina Adentan stretch has become life-threatening. Pedestrians virtually compete with vehicles for the right to use the road, resulting in knockdowns. Traders and commuters who ply the road say the situation poses a daily threat to their lives. What happened normally is that when we are to cross, sometimes we need to force ourselves in to cross. Even though the police standing there, we force ourselves in so that the cars can stop for us to go. And it's dangerous because sometimes the speed the cars come, take to come. So that when they realize that it's about to show a, a, a red light, they are always coming to us, but we, too, we are going in, and it's not helping us at all. As you can see, it's really crowded here, and it's very dangerous for school children, at least the little ones. Even we, the adults, we find it very difficult in crossing the road. So I think the government should do something about this. Sometimes when the traffic lights is red, they still they are moving. Has anyone died in your school because of their crossing the road? Yes. It actually doesn't feel safe because most often you have to be very alert and then you are even scared. Sometimes you can easily get knocked down because of the way the drivers also speed and then they are quick to just try and then avoid traffic and all those other things. So it actually doesn't feel safe. Well, what of the children? How do you feel for them when you see them crossing? Them? Actually. For the school children, especially that most often they are crossing the road without any adults assisting them, it's, it's scary at times. And then recently, I think some children got knocked down also on this same road. So we actually need a footbridge. Leader of the drivers at the SDA Sakura taxi rank tells me the situation is worrying, adding they will live in constant fear until the foot bridges are fixed. So far, I see there were a lot of problem power. I see a far traffic light and the overhead bridge, you know. In fact, there was a student who was saying, Hey, the mom, light, he says, Somebody be see home, nobody be see home, be see home, no, or man, so that problem is, he see what has accident day and night, day and night, accident is, he was a year to an amount of eco municipal fine, almost on my my father. Now, I'm going to say, 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 I'
Eboko municipal enya jo yeko police station amso mo mo tinya won hwe yi si jifo so na e fi se bi ombetu abo so e from so so amu the street lights na mo ye hu adwuma am say every week bi ano accident an si wo this dance na be me no na me nsa e si Compounding the issue is the numerous broken down traffic lights on the stretch, which causes huge and massive traffic on the road. Despite calls to the authorities to fix it, authorities seem adamant. A recent research conducted by the Accra Metropolitan Assembly in collaboration with Bloomberg Initiative for Global Road Safety indicates that about 13,000 road crashes occurred between the year 2011 and 2015, which claimed 909 lives and injured almost 3,000 others, with about 60% of these accidents occurring on major highways. Member of Parliament for Medina, Boniface Abubakar Sadiq, revealed steps are being taken to begin work on the footbridges on the Medina Adentan stretch by October 2018. Reporting for City News, Anshali Ziwu. So that was Anshali Ziwu's report. Dr. Kaminta, we have two problems. The people of Teshi say they don't have a road. Their road is bad, so they are complaining. There's dust. Their business is dying. But I can project, if this road were done and it's smooth, they will start complaining and saying people are being knocked down because drivers will be driving at neck-breaking speed because probably there, there will not be enough bridges, probably not enough street lights. So it's like double game. Either the road is completely bad, drivers can't move, or the road is done so nicely that people just drive and kill people. Um, there is this issue of do you do the roads or do you leave them? Mm. But it is not that straightforward. Mm. Development, we say, is for people. So you must do it to suit the lifestyle of the people. Mm -hmm. And if the lifestyle of the people are not in consonance with what you are doing, then you must educate them to be able to use what you are providing. Mm. What am I talking about? We need roads. 